so far we have only discussed the equilibrium uh, properties of systems and now we're going to take a look at an elementary kinetic theory of transport processes which is basically describing what is happening in a non-equilibrium situation uh, without being rigorous so we're doing an elementary theory we can learn dependencies on all significant uh, parameters and we will be dealing with uh, dilute gas uh, in our discussion so uh, so let me note here the basic uh, points first we're talking about a non-equilibrium uh, situation we're talking about a basic theory so that gives us dependencies on all significant parameters so this is not a rigorous uh, theory and uh, we're talking about a dilute gas so uh, this is going to be the transport in a dilute gas and with this dilute gas we have the following assumptions uh, one the time between collusions is much greater than the collusion time um, so we can say that uh, collusions are rare time between collusions is much greater than the collusion time uh, collusion time is much less than time between collusions the probability of a collusion of uh, having three or more molecules simultaneously is negligible um, probability of the collusion collision of three or more molecules simultaneously is negligible and the distance between the molecules the average distance uh, between the molecules delta x this is much greater than the de Broglie wavelength uh, so we're talking about a classical gas here the collisions themselves may require a quantum mechanical description quantum mechanical uh, mechanics may play a role during collisions so we're basically saying it's an uh, ideal gas the collisions uh, are independent of the past history so the probability probability of a collision is independent of the past history of collisions and we call the probability of a collision uh, p of t is the probability actually it's not having a collision the p of t is the probability of not encountering not encountering a collision in a time interval t 
Now we call the mean time between successive collisions the mean free time. So we have a few uh, definitions here. So first, uh, the mean time tau between successive collisions is called the mean free time and the mean distance between successive collisions is called the mean free path. So I will show this with L, the mean distance between successive collisions is called the mean free path. And we're going to assume that all molecules uh, travel um, with the same average speed. which I'm going to denote by V bar. So basically we are neglecting uh, speed distribution. Maxwell speed distribution is neglected in this elementary theory. Then we're going to have a simple relationship between mean free time and mean free path. That is the mean free path L is equal to the mean speed of a molecule of a molecule multiplied by the mean free time so l is equal to v bar times tau now imagine that we have a molecule a that has radius uh, lowercase letter a uh, that is approaching a slightly bigger molecule a prime which has radius a prime with a relative uh, velocity capital v all right and we call the distance uh, between the two centers of these two molecules uh, b so if this is if b is less than a plus a prime there will be a collusion if b is greater than a plus a prime uh, there is no collusion so the molecules will be scattered only if b is less than uh, a plus a prime in which case we're going to have an extremely uh, large force uh, developing between the two uh, molecules. All right, so uh, radius of molecule A is A, radius of molecule A prime is A prime. Um, center to center distance center to center distance between the two molecules is uh, B and we have two conditions if B is greater than A plus A prime no forces between the two molecules there is no scattering. If B is less than A plus A prime, extremely large forces will develop between the uh, molecules and the molecules will be scattered. So here we will have scattered molecules in this scenario. So you can think of an imaginary disk of radius A plus A prime centered at the center of A that moves with a relative velocity V with respect to A prime and uh, there is an area sigma which is spanned by this uh,